If you're trying to learn AIM faster, this video will help you a ton. I'm going to take how psychologists recommend learning skills and put it into AIM. For anyone who saw my last AIM science video, you'll find that this one is way more usable and comes with a lot more understandable information and it's very different overall. If you're new to the channel, I'm an AIM coach, worked with Valorant pros, top 500 players in Apex Legends, Overwatch, Valorant, and other games, and many more people. All my content's focused around AIM improvement, so if this kind of stuff sounds interesting to you, make sure you click subscribe. So before I can really apply the science to AIM, we have to look at what the science actually says. There's this idea called operant conditioning. Basically, it's the idea that when you do something, your environment will respond, and then when you are in a similar situation, your behavior will adapt to fit the feedback from the environment. So crop out all the big words, and basically what this is saying is that you do something, what you do next time when you're in a similar situation is based on what happened that first time. Pull a lever and get food, you'll pull it again. If you pull a lever and get shocked, you won't pull it again. Now the environment can give four kinds of feedback positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment. Positive reinforcement, I feel like it's very well known, everyone knows it. You do something good, you get a prize. You hit the target, you get a point. There's also negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement, in my opinion, gets misunderstood a lot. It seems like people think negative reinforcement is kind of a punishment or something bad. This is not true. Reinforcement is always a good outcome meant to encourage the continuation of a behavior in the future. Negative reinforcement is the removal of something you don't like in response to getting something right or getting closer. A kid gets an A in math. Their parents then reinforce this negatively by giving them less chores. It is a reward through the removal of an inconvenience. So remember, reinforcement always has a good outcome. It is designed to encourage repeating a behavior and continuation. On the other hand, punishment is the opposite. Punishment is an action taken to discourage the repetition of a behavior in the future. Negative punishment removes something good from your environment. You're listening to really good music, you miss a shot, maybe now you pause that music. Positive punishment adds something you don't like. If you're aiming while listening to music and have a bad run, play something annoying your eight-year-old cousin listens to on TikTok, and that would be a positive punishment. So keep in mind, positive is not good. Negative is not bad. Positive is adding a new thing. Negative is removing a pre-existing thing. Reinforcement is good punishment is bad. Before we take a stop and apply this to AIM, I want to look at random luck and shaping. Let's say you're trying to figure out how to do something. If you're always told yes that's the thing or no it's not, eventually you should try all of the possible things you can do and find the right one. If you're rewarded for it when you get it right, pretty soon you will know how to do it after a couple yeses but you still have to randomly find the yes. If you have 100 levers you might pull 90 of them and then find the lever that gives you food. So if you want another snack, you'll probably know which switch to pull within the first like five switches. You'll know roughly where it is and you'll go there and pull a few and get the food. After that, you should know exactly which switch you need to pull every time. But if you had feedback that said when you got closer to the lever, you'd need a lot less time to find the right one. This is called shaping, guiding someone towards the goal with positive or negative feedback along the way as they make it closer. A coach can help with shaping you and you can learn this yourself. So how do you apply all of this to AIM? Well, the best reinforcers are basic needs like food and water. So if you have a snack or a candy you like, eat it when you succeed at what you're trying to do. There's also secondary reinforcers, which are things you teach yourself to consider to be good. The sound Kovacs makes when you hit the target, the target disappearing, money. While these are definitely helpful, they're not as useful as the primary reinforcers, food and water. So you can like eat a Skittle, a popcorn, some chicken, whatever when you succeed at one rep. If I were to take this approach, there's a few ways I'd handle it. I might go into a never miss tracking scenario and eat every time I get a new session best score. Remember, we are shaping, so reward for getting closer to the desired outcome. Unless being a world record holder is like one step above where you are right now, you shouldn't be waiting until you get the world record to give yourself a reward. And at the same time, you shouldn't be rewarding yourself for doing 
worse than you usually do or worse than your previous run or anything because then you're not rewarding yourself for improvement you're just rewarding yourself for the sake of doing it which means the environment isn't giving feedback for successful aim for flick related practices i'd go into a reflex based scenario and treat it like i'm in free play even if i'm not if i hit a shot i'd eat the food because this scenario is more of an all or nothing type, it is harder to shape. There is a behavior to do, do it. Get a reward when you do it. Start with an easier version of the scenario if needed and work your way to the harder version over time. What I like about these options for flicking and tracking practice is that it's really focused on individual motions and single repetitions. It's easy to say that a rep is better or it's worse. In a full length scenario, it's hard to say which part was good and which part was a choke and the food doesn't really correlate to the good part, just an overall good on average run that could have a massive choke towards the end. That being said, due to Kovacs having sounds that act as secondary reinforcers, eating food when you get a high score can still be an effective way to incorporate primary reinforcers into your aim on normal scenarios. So you can play one wall six targets small, if you get a high score, eat a candy. You can play control sphere, if you get a high score, eat a candy. You may even find it more beneficial to train like this as you get more reps in. I would recommend trying everything I've recommended at least a few times and see if any methods seem to make you play really well that session or really well the next day. See what seems to work for you. When I was listening to the Huberman Lab podcast, the podcast by Dr. Andrew Huberman, Stanford researcher for neurobiology, I remember him mentioning that it was found that adults would learn at the rates of children, which is significantly faster than they normally do when they are motivated by food. So please try to include food. I also want to talk about observational learning. Basically, this is just learning through the VODs of better players to see their skills. Observational learning is a tactic that's been used forever. W. Timothy Galloway describes it as the best way to teach someone something in the inner game of tennis, and it's an all-around good way to learn things. So I'd recommend finding VODs of better players aiming. Try to find ones that include hand cams, but if you can find really good ones that don't include hand cams, then you can use those too. The hand cam allows you to see the physical motions being made, but without it, you still actually get a lot of information about how the player moves their crosshair. If you've been struggling a lot with stopping power and you find a VOD where a person stops really well, even if they don't use a hand cam, this could show you what you need to do. Now, when you watch the VOD, just let it sit in. You don't have to notice every detail or even any details. Just focus on it and see what happens. Unconsciously you want to learn from this VOD. You don't need to take a bunch of things away consciously, you'll learn unconsciously. You don't know exactly how every micro motion in your aim works now, and you won't know exactly how to change it from the VOD. Just let it happen, trust your unconscious mind. One warning I have is that oftentimes high level VODs will contain your mistakes just less noticeably, so try to find a lot of high level VODs to kind of negate this and therefore see people who play without your issues. Don't spend all of your time on VOD reviews, but using them every now and then can help a ton. For anyone wondering, I learned most of this information in my college psychology class, so it's pretty universally accepted for motor learning and learning in general, but that also means that I don't have all the sources as there's so many, but I did put a few articles on operant conditioning in the description for some reading if you're interested. I also put links to the Huberman Lab podcast and the inner game of tennis as I pulled a bit of information from my prior readings and watchings of those. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe for more aim training content.